Hi, I'm Gene McLaughlin. I'd like to welcome you to Old Bridge Outlook with Mayor Owen Henry. On this program, the mayor has an opportunity to chat with you about things taking place in the township and to introduce you to some people making things happen in the township. Mayor, how are you doing today? Good to see you again, Gene. Mayor, uh, spring looks like it has finally sprung. Hopefully, well, sp spring is in the air. Bit. It's a little chilly. A little uh, chilly. But yeah, but we have a lot going on in town now. The spring is always a great time in right. Old Bridge with all our leagues getting started. I was at a number of soccer events over this past weekend. We have baseball. Um, not right. kicking off, but starting yeah. off now right. in our town, a lot of our league. So we have a lot of young, young residents getting geared up for spring. And as usual, the town is always busy in the springtime too, getting all its uh, chores down, just like you do around your house. So right. spring cleaning, uh, the mayor's clean team is going to be hitting the roads over oh, the really? next couple of weeks. We have a we have a lot of cleaning up to do. Yeah. Um, but we're getting ready for that. Very excited about those programs, as as, as in the past, we have great uh, participation in that program. Um, our parks and recs are busy getting all our parks. Uh, cleaned up yeah. and, and ready for the springtime so families can go out and enjoy the swing sets. Uh, our capital projects are getting started again, so you're going to see a lot of activity going on in our neighborhoods with, with drainage, curbing, and road resurfacing. Um, the state's been very busy on Route 18. We had yeah, Route 18 sure resurfaced. <laughs> mm. um, there's just a lot going on right. in, in the township of Old Virginia Springs, just as it should be, and we're very excited about it. Mayor, I know you always have a pet peeve about cleaning up the town. Yes. Are people still dumping a lot of things uh, around town? It just seems like it doesn't stop. Jim. Really? It's like the mail just keeps coming. <laughs> and I go down the roads and I see, and, it, and it's, it, it's kind of depressing Yeah. because this this garbage and this litter is being deposited by fellow human beings right. who really need to take care of their environment, their planet, because it's going to treat you the way you treat it. Right. And uh, so we'll, we'll get we'll get the material up off the streets again, and hopefully we'll change a generation because yeah. that's who we're focused on changing a generation. Right. When we became this disposable throwaway society, I, yes. I don't know, throw it out the window society. Right. You know, we've always been a throw it away society, right. but it always usually wound up in a dump. Why it winds up on the sides of our roads now, I don't know. Yeah. Um, so we're hoping we have a lot of educational at the end of every cleanup. I talk to the youngsters that are involved that, you yeah. know, we shouldn't have to be doing this. Right. You know, we could be out having fun. Yeah. Uh, I know cleaning up is fun because right. you see the difference, yeah. a dirty road and then a clean road. Um, but so hopefully we'll change a generation and they seem to be getting it. Okay, well, thank you, Mayor. Mayor, last time we were here, we touched briefly on the fact the budget had just been passed <coughs> previously the night before. Mm -hmm. But I thought, as we discussed also off camera, it would be helpful to share some of the details sure, with you, the residents. One of the biggest responsibilities I have as a mayor is to present the budget for the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do we spend our money, where we spend right. it, you know. So that's my... I, I consider that my biggest responsibility, uh, besides public safety, is also is ex right up there. But you right. know, one of the main purposes of my administration was to turn this town around. Right. When I took it over, it was a financial disaster. Um, we are no longer a financial disaster. We are in. We have sound financial business practices taking place now in town, so the residents uh, know where every dollar is coming from mm -hmm. and where every dollar is going. And that was one of my priorities when I became mayor. Was to turn it around and we've come full circle right. when it comes to budgeting. The budgeting pro pro process and the budget experience prior to me coming, becoming mayor was always very um, political. Uh, remember the, the budget meetings prior to me, they, were, will remember them. they were lined with township yes. employees that were being used as pawns to influence council to vote on budgets that were filled with loopholes and flaws and one-shot revenues. That is not the case any longer. Uh, w this budget adoption, there was very few people from the public were there. Right. Uh, they're very comfortable, confident in, in our ability to put a budget together, spend their money, provide the services, and give them the value for their money. I've always said that now to people in Old Bridge, <coughs> do get a true value for it. If you, right. I'll take on any taxing entity, I'll take on any entity that charges rates here in Old Bridge, mm -hmm. and I believe they're getting the best bang for their dollar here at this municipal level. That 20 cents that I get to keep. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, thank you, Mayor. It's a nice segue. And folks, we're going to give you an opportunity to look inside this budget a little bit today. We're pleased to welcome our guest, Mr. Christopher Marion, who is our business administrator. You see him at the council meeting sitting on the left-hand side of the mayor and our director of finance, Hamachu Shaw, who controls all the money in the township. Right, Hamachu? Gentlemen, thank welcome. You, and <laughs> thanks for coming out today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> Uh, Chris, if I can begin with you, we've sure. had some various conversations over the years that uh, seeing budgets created, a little bit like watching sausage made, you don't, <laughs> want to, you don't want to get inside it too much. But what is the process? Would you mind sharing it with us and with the residents who may not understand? They see the end result when it passes council. 
How does it happen? What starts it? Where does it go? Well, I, let, me, let me start mm -hmm. out by saying that the budget really starts in, in August, September of the pre prior year. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we do here is we send out budget transmittal memos to all the department heads and directors. Um, we look to get, uh, we kind of set some budget guidelines for everyone, um, mostly very conservative. We want to make sure that we are justifying each dollar spent. As the mayor said, our priority mm -hmm. essentially is to go through, look at all costs and expenses and see where there's opportunities for savings. Um, and in some cases, uh, areas would need additional funding uh, to improve operations. So that usually starts around August, September. Uh, October, we meet with all the different department heads right. and divisions. Uh, myself and Mr. Shaw, uh, we, we go through line item by line item. It's pretty, the sausage is a pretty good analogy <laughs> of it. Um, we do uh, go through every line item with them. We ask questions. We uh, try to find and work with the department heads. And one of the things I've seen over the last four years of being a town administrator is that the department heads come prepared. Um, they're involved. They're making suggestions as to where they can improve operations and savings. So in four years, it's really become a team effort. So we really look mm -hmm. to sit down and, and go through uh, every line item, uh, working with each of the department representatives. Um, that goes then to November. We have ongoing meetings then. That's a, our formal meetings are in October. But right. we meet again November, December, January, uh, going back and forth, looking at specific items. Mr. Shah, I spent about 35 hours then uh, sure. finalizing the budget document yeah. with tremendous help from our staff in the finance department. Uh, we really couldn't do it without people like Beth C uh, Cunningham and Tammy and Vicki and Dawn. Um, we really, it, it's a real, uh, again, a, a real effort. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's then pre uh, transmitted to the Township Council, and that becomes the Council's budget. Mayor's recommended budget right. becomes the Town Council budget. Uh, and then that's when the uh, budget review starts from the Council level. And so we do have budget subcommittee meetings with the Council. We right. had three this year. I think we had four <coughs> last year. Uh, and then it goes to Council for a public <coughs> presentation uh, and then for adoption. Um, so throughout that, throughout that process, there's a lot of communication between yeah. departments and divisions and with the council in particular when you get to that stage of the budget process. Okay, thank Jean you, Chris. Um, well, how much if I can turn to you yeah. on this? Uh, when you send out these letters of transmittal, do you suggest a budget to these department heads or do they zero base it from ground up, top uh, down, bottom up? How does you it work? took my word. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say, <laughs> that the, the, the the entire process, while statutorily we require to do a line item budget, but our process is basically a zero-based budget. We look at mm. every single dollar, <coughs> uh, you know, the historical spending, and we actually look at three years of historical spending, and then we look at the future plans and changes. And so it's basically uh, the process is a zero-based budget process in preparation. Ultimately, it results into the line item budget that is you know, statutorily require and present it to the, to the council and the public. When they return to you, the department heads return to you, Sure. do they come with uh, their request? Is this a wish list that you then pare down and trim and work on? We, I always ask them in the, within the guidelines to budget what you think that you need based on whatever mm -hmm. operational issues you have. So in cases where we've seen, I'll give you an example from vehicle repair. Yes, in sir. some cases we've had line items and sub accounts mm -hmm. that have a higher uh, number in there for vehicle repair. We get down to the root of the issue. Sometimes it's, does the vehicle need to be replaced? Is it more <coughs> cost effective to replace a vehicle or a piece of mm -hmm. equipment? Um, but a lot of times, and it's also, as, as Mr. Shaw, I think it's a great point, you base it on three to four years of trends. I'll, set, I'll sit, we have my ruler, <laughs> and I sit there <laughs> exactly. and say, you spent this in 13, this in 14, this in 15, you know, why 16 is this up? And what will right. happen is they'll be able to explain, you know what, we had additional, uh, additional permits we had to get for this specific a piece of equipment or there's certain things so it's a really it's a lot of give and take and a okay. lot of sitting down and going through it's a lot of, it's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of work well, i'm sure and, it and is and mayor like mayor uh, said it, I'm sorry, I'm much like mayor said it's w their, their departments are now well prepared our budgets are very detailed when you look at the budget mm -hmm. you know book that we prepare and is published online uh and it and and it's at the library you'll see there's a lot of detail in the budget that helps uh, mayor and councils to understand, for us to understand, and so, and, and, and like Chris says, it's a lot of give and take. We collect all the information, and then we finalize uh, within the, the cap that we are placed right. to okay. prepare the budget. Thank you very much. Mayor, I'm sure when you get into this process, you've got some objectives, you've got some thoughts and some goals. Where do you enter this? Um, I don't micromanage this, this mm. section of it. I have, you know, more faith than Mr. Marion and Mr. Shah um, to get me through this process. 
But at the end, we sit down and we talk and we talk about our goals and objectives. Of course, of mayor, I want to guarantee that the right. residents are being served properly, right. that the services that they deserve are being delivered at the lowest possible cost. And that's when I do get involved. Mm -hmm. um, we do have to say no a lot of times uh, to department heads when they give us the so-called wish list. Mm -hmm. you know, we uh, will sit down and, and talk about you know, what we expect that department to be doing. Uh, we have to support them. We right. have to give them the tools they need to succeed. But at the end of the day, we also have to hold everyone, I hold everyone accountable. Mm -hmm. That's my job as mayor, to make sure that the information I'm getting is accurate, to make sure that uh, we're making the right decisions. And so far, we've been successful in that, uh, in that trend. So uh, I'm involved at a certain level, but then at the end, I get really get down to it. And we go through every line by line. And as, <laughs> as we said, we've added many, many sub-accounts over over the past f a couple of budget cycles. And they've helped us track, track funds. They've helped us save money. Mm -hmm. um, they've helped us identify areas where we need additional funds, where we can get money from. And you know, if it's been not been used for three or four years, why is it there? Why is it in there? And, and if it's, there's a valid reason why it's there, we leave it there. Uh, if not, we'll move it to uh, someplace else where it is needed. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work doing a budget this yeah, way. I'm sure it not, is. You know, just, I don't know how they did it in the past. I, just, you know. <laughs> I have no idea. I wouldn't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the examples for the sub-account <coughs> yeah, indicated, there's a lot of changes in technology. Mm -hmm. This year yes. we focused sub-account wise on trying to come up with the account codes that would reflect what we were actually doing, whether it was a, a software, uh, a, a maintenance account, because we had things, sometimes departments would charge equipment or acquisition of equipment to software maintenance. It was software related. Hmm. So we really tried to go through with the department heads this year, our MIS divisions, to capture what's occurring given the changes in technology and really our reliance and focus on technology to improve services. So that's kind of one of our budget areas we did talk about with the council during the budget review process. Okay, thank you, Chris. If you could do me a favor and just touch on some of the grand objectives you had going into this budget process. The grand objectives? Yeah, the big overall objectives. Yeah. What did you want to accomplish with this money that you were putting into the budget? Well, when we, we start, when we start every year, and it's in our presentation, uh, every year we start out with making sure that we're under the caps uh, and that we are looking for operational efficiencies and cost savings that can help us in subsequent years. Um, we really started something when the mayor took office, made it very clear to us we needed to look at a longer term financial planning model, mm -hmm. uh, not just trying to plug gaps and get through the budget year. Yes, sir. So okay. that's what the, the, that's kind of been our focus. We talked about, we went for five years worth of data, we looked through those sub accounts, um, and we really tried to put together a plan for a longer term uh, financial plan. You can't predict everything that happens. Right. <laughs> We've yeah. surely found that out. Um, but you, do, you, do, you can model your budget to, uh, to reflect priorities and needs and community uh, goals mm -hmm. and objectives. Okay. How much you, uh, what goals do you have as the finance director? Do you have specific goals that, you know, are financially related? Well, you know, <coughs> we, are, we are governed by the, the, the law that, uh, that implemented by state with the various statutory caps, the levy caps, the spending caps, and then we have to deal with the mandatory expenses like pension cost, yeah. uh, health care costs mm -hmm. that we require to maintain. Uh, and so we, the, the, the first goal is set uh, among us is to make sure that we, we deliver the budget within the cap limits. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not asked the, the, to exceed the cap limits um, you know, by the voter. So that's, that's first objective, to make sure that we stay within the statutory caps and our spending plan is, is governed by that goals. Uh, and then we look at every department's expenses to see, make sure that they are within, you know, a guideline of uh, increases from year to year. Okay, thank you, Manchu. If you just hold those thoughts, gentlemen, Folks, uh, we're getting ready to take a break. We're talking today with Amachu Shah, our Director of Finance, and Christopher Marion, our Business Administrator, about what goes into making up the township budget. We'll be back in a moment. Please stay with us. Forget about it, kid. You're in the storm drain now. <laughs> but I should be in the trash can. People threw all of us down here. Then they hosed in those rotting leaves. We'll litter now. We gotta stick together. Here's our right to the beat. Litter? Not just litter, kid. Your pollution. What goes in our storm drains ends up on our beaches. Clean water. 
Folks, welcome back to Old Bridge Outlook with Mayor Owen Henry. Today we're talking a little bit about the workings, how it gets to be the township budget, the $54.3 million that you just saw passed by the council. Our guests again are Hamanchu Shah, our Director of Finance, and Christopher Marion, our Business Administrator. Gentlemen, again, thank you. Thank you, James. And Hamanchu, if I could pick up with you. Before we went to the break, we were talking a little bit about referencing caps. What are caps and what are they? Well, we are governed by uh, uh, with the two caps limit. Uh, one is the operating limit, and basically uh, uh, your pens and pencils and salaries and all of those costs cannot go up more than 3.5%. But there is even a restricted cap limit that we, are, we have to maintain is the levy cap. Uh, since uh, 2008, we have been uh, uh, implemented with a levy cap of 2%. So mm -hmm. basically, the levy cannot go inc it cannot be increased more than two percent. You say levy, if you would, how much you could you clarify taxes. the word? Taxes. 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 Okay. Thank so you. the taxes cannot go up more than two percent, and and with the with the exception of health cost and and the capital cost, and so uh, everything has to fit in with that two percent increase. <coughs> Roughly amounts for the old bridge is about six hundred thousand dollars increase. And, and this year alone, we had a, a six more than six hundred thousand dollars increase in our health care costs. Yeah, that was an amazing. Number. So we had to make sure that we, you know, make adjustment in the budget to fit in with those increases, absorbing those increases, and still producing budget within two percent cap limit. Wow, that's got to be a stress, Chris, to do <laughs> that. That's got to be a little little magic there, huh? Well, I think one of the things we do, as we mentioned before, when we set forth the goals and objectives right. at the beginning of the process, we look at the big, the, we call them the, the big ticket items. Mm -hmm. um, Health care is, is always a concern right. here, but that's statewide. It's every municipality, every business is, is struggling yes, with health care costs. Yeah. So that's something that we look, we go out to market that each year. Um, we start that process starting around June. We'll go out and start to take a look at what our claims experience is. Uh, what the trends are and starting to put that together, knowing that in the fall you go out to the market, um, and getting uh, competitive uh, quotes, and then that really, uh, not very competitive necessarily, um, but then you have to make sure that you're uh, putting that into the budget early on. So you're kind of preparing for it um, pretty much year round. Well, then how does, if I may ask the question, how does the state's contribution to the budget fit in a, in, in, into this pot? I mean, as I read, it was $6.27 million the state gives the township, yes? Well, there's, there's different revenue categories yes. for the budget, one of them being municipal. They call it state aid, but it's really energy receipts tax. Um, so that stayed flat for the last, as long as I can remember, mm -hmm. at least the last 10 years, maybe, um, in regards yes. to, so that's state aid, but that's just one revenue category. We have other rhetoric, we have fees and permit fees. Um, we also have a revenue category uh, from the, uh, uh, the state, as we mentioned before. Yes, sir. Um, fund balance. Fund balance is the big one. That's something you've heard a lot of debate about, not right. so much this year, but in prior years, and really managing that fund balance. Right. Um, and that's something that we tried to keep stable. Every year, I believe, we've increased by about $250,000, but it's based on um, you know, looking at prior year's usage and making sure that our cash fund balance left stays at a, a, an increasing level. Okay. And we have increased that yes, over, much. we have increased that uh, cash fund balance over uh, several years now, which has helped us, you know, improve our ratings. Is that a mandate by the state or is that just a cautionary it, thing that you folks do? It's, it's our philosophy, uh, you know, uh, along with the mayor's uh, directions to have a no one-shot mm -hmm. revenue right. approach to the yeah. budget. We make sure that uh, we also maintain the fund balance that mm -hmm. we can replenish and continue to use because that's a big source of revenue equation of the budget. Remember, this budget has to be a balanced budget. Right. Revenue has right. to equal to the expenses with the limit on the tax increase. So we have to make sure that fund balance, which is our big source of revenue, uh, is maintained. And, and we are conservative in the revenue budgeting. Right. Very conservative. We make sure that we don't over-project the revenues. Okay, thank you, Omanchu. Mayor, if I can turn to you on this, as we've talked many times, you as the mayor of Oldbridge Township are responsible for 20% of the entire mm -hmm. uh, bill that the people see on their, on their tax bill, right? Yes. One thing with that is I understand that we're taking in about $33 million in taxes this year toward the budget. Towards the municipal budget, Toward correct. the municipal budget. But as we also talked off air, you give money out, right? Where does the money go and who gets it? 
Well, we, we're responsible for the school district, that they send the money to the, to the, to the township, the school, the county, uh, the library, open, the space. Fire, uh, open space with the county, and the fire district. So yes. we collect every tax dollar. I don't know what the total, yeah. how much do we collect, Amatu? It's Our about total, $150 million. We collect $150 million. Okay, from okay. these other sources listed on the tax From the bill. taxpayers yes. of Oak okay. Ridge. But we also give money out. Well, we collect 150 and we keep 33 of it. The rest yeah. of it goes out. Really? Right. That's some ratio. You only keep a fifth? Is that a yeah. And, right? and mm. what's important to realize that like even if we don't collect it, we have to pay it. Exactly. Really. If we were to be short with taxes, people yeah. don't pay their taxes, we still have to pay the full amount out to these other agencies. So whoever put this system together, uh, you know, why, yeah. do, why doesn't everyone have to send their own bill out? And boy, I yeah. think you'd see a big change yeah, in people's say, attitudes yeah. if they were to get these large bills. I mean, you know, our yeah. bill from the, the average bill for the municipality is about $115, $120 per month. How do you even begin to budget for that? Uh, is that an exigency well, you yes. just can't uh, budget for? You know, we, we, account, we account for those, uh, uh, you know, problems. Uh, obviously, we have implemented a process to make sure that we are close to 100% collections, which yeah. we are. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's an important, and I think sometimes people don't realize why we have some of this process is because we guarantee every other agency 100% collection, regardless of the, you know, whether we collect or not. Well, that well, is certainly a stress point, I'll yes. tell you. I never realized that as many times as we've had this discussion, I never realized that. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Chris, one thing we chatted about a little sure. bit was uh, the capital budget. Mm -hmm. uh, the capital budget's also a piece of the entire financial picture, but not all of that goes into this budget, right? All that money does not go into this budget. The capital budget itself is set aside. What goes into this budget? We have a multi-year capital program, uh, which encompasses, you know, a five-year plan, right. essentially. Um, the debt service principal interest is all included in the operating budget. Um, we do do the bond ordinances uh, that allows for the spending authorization for the current year bond ordinance. And then Mr. Shaw does the sale of bands uh, as, as well as bonds. The bonds and things as the years progress. So that amortization schedule for those is included in the operating budget. Okay. One thing about you were just talking about bonds, and May, you've alluded to it before too. The bond rating has become increasingly, in my view, increasingly important here in the township. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to the, to the resident when they see a bond rating? I guess it's Moody's. Yes. What, what do we go from to and what impact does it have? I think over the last two, uh, three years, the, the township has seen uh, improvement in our ratings. Uh, the Moody's has increased our ratings uh, to a positive outlook to a double A1, which is just one notch below triple A. So we really have an excellent bond ratings. And so, you know, back in 1990s, we were close to a junk bond to now oh we are at the double <laughs> triple a ratings yeah. and if you look at the 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 biggest benefit is to reduce financing cost mm -hmm. the okay. better the rating the lower the interest cost so when the you go out to bond you when pay we go out lower bond, interest exactly for that money that you bond for okay well that's that's interesting uh so that it does have a definite impact absolutely, absolutely. revenue uh, impact Bottom line, what are the residents going to see with this new budget? Are they going to see anything on their, on their bill, on their uh, tax bill? Are they going to see increased They're going to see increased, uh, uh, I think it's $26 on the average home assessed at $150,000. Right. Um, so you're going to see an increase. Uh, one of the things that we try to put out in the budget presentation is to show those increases over time. We've been under 2%, I think, since 2012 or 13. But if you look at the average, we've really tried to keep everything under caps. Um, and we really try to maintain the fiscal health of the township through that long-term plan. So there is an increase of $26. Uh, that includes, uh, includes the library. Okay. Um, but then, again, your tax bill will differ based upon if you do added assessment or however your house is Right, you however much is worth. You put a deck on or something, yeah. Municipal okay. portion went up $20. The library portion yeah. went up $6. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's necessary. Uh, for the sound budget practices, mm -hmm. and and if you look at the over the last four years from 12 to today, we have about 1.37 percent average tax increase, Annual which increase, is right. well. which is well below you know cost of living, yeah. uh, and with everything that we have to absorb, uh, and with the flat revenue from the state uh, for energy tax receipt that we're mm -hmm. supposed to be getting a lot more money. Yes, sir. I think it's a very, you know, sound budget practice, and obviously the rating agency has recognized that. 
Okay. And Jane, it's also important yes, sir, to please. realize, you know, what, what we've, the challenges we faced. I was just going to ask you about we've challenges. Had, I think we've I picked, we've cleaned it up yeah. after two hurricanes, yeah. a right. couple of really, really bad winters where a lot of township resources, we had to spend a lot of money. We've <coughs> had some public safety issues where uh, re uh, revenues had to be, you know, used. Mm -hmm. uh, the home invasions, we had the horrible incident up on the path mark. Mm -hmm. um, we faced... Um, a lot of challenges, and right. we've proven that we can still function, we can still come under the 2% cap. Uh, we run towards the problems and we solve them. Mm -hmm. so we've had every excuse in the world to raise taxes, and we have it. We've, we've held the line, uh, as Mancha said, 1.3% average, and I don't, I, I wouldn't even consider that an increase, but it's mm -hmm. just, you know, it's, it is a few cents, a few dollars right. per year, but based on what we've had to face, the challenges that this town well, you just uh, sort of took away my next question, Mayor. I was going to ask you about the challenges. I think you've done a pretty good job of outlining them for the past 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, what the challenges are. Let me ask you another question, if I can turn it around a little bit. How much, Director of Finance, opportunities that you see, looking at your crystal ball, opportunities? Magic 8 ball. Not <laughs> the magic 8, the magic eight, eight ball. That's our, that's may not be funded yeah, right now, yeah. but things you'd like to do. You know, you wish list well, opportunities you see in front of the township. What would they be? Of course, we have we have a con uh, opportunity to look at our you know uh, negotiations, at upcoming negotiation, to continue to um, make sure that we contain the cost mm -hmm. uh, and and keep that within limit. Uh, we we're looking at uh, various source of revenue, and we also looking at implementing, continue to implement uh, implementing a technology uh, yeah. that helps us you know, further, more efficient, uh, and reduce the cost. Okay, Chris, what would you say to that? What do you see as the biggest opportunities? I think from an opportunity standpoint, you also have to look at our shared services. And I uh, think we currently have okay. shared services, I know with Sayreville for technology, um, with the school district for our school security plan. Um, there's a lot of different ways we've been able to work with our neighboring jurisdictions, right. as well as our, um, uh, as well as our in, in town uh, organizations and uh, uh, entities and I think maybe this year we start to look a little bit uh, further into uh, trying to share services um, to offset costs because everybody's dealing with the same types right, of issues right, and maybe yeah. Old Bridge does something better than a neighbor or another district maybe another mm -hmm. school district maybe does something better so hopefully working in conjunction with our, our other partners in, in the community and neighboring jurisdictions. Okay, thank you, Chris. And Mayor, if I could uh, go to you last, uh, you're out there a lot with the people pressing the flesh. <laughs> what do you see as big opportunities from what you hear the people um, say? Uh, economic <coughs> development here in Old Bridge, I think we have uh, a great opportunity coming um, in, the f in the future uh, with the hospital expansion. We have the, uh, the ability to attract some additional uh, health care uh, and, and, and try to, redu to reduce the burden on the, on the residents, uh, right. the, you know, on the residential goal, commercial, um, light industrial and, and raise revenue in town. I think we have a, a real good opportunity. We have uh, some areas in town that have just been named areas in, re uh, in need of redevelopment. Right. So we're looking to attract uh, additional rateables in town and raise the, you know, raise the money that way, the funds. Uh, we have some opportunity with energy savings coming up in the next year mm -hmm. or two uh, with our ESIP program, um, I th shared services, and, and just doing our jobs uh, a little bit better here in town as far as just continue to look for ways to improve the way we deliver our services and more, you know, fiscally responsible. A and we're open to anything, Gene. <laughs> okay. Anything that'll save us, you well, know, and save and the taxpayers money. Okay, uh, well, thank you again, Mayor. And folks, we've been talking to our guest today, Christopher Marion, our business administrator, and Amon Shara, director of finance, trying to cast a little light on the township budget that you see at the final stage. We hope we gave you a little more understanding of what goes on what takes place in the money that you see being spent by the township, how it's allocated and how it's spent. I want to thank you for watching. This has been Old Bridge Outlook with Mayor Owen Henry. I'm Gene McLaughlin. We'll see you next time. Take care.